Good morning, afternoon, or evening, sir or madam, as the case may be. This is Dr. Robin Kearney Frazier. I'm the president of Guild, president of Guild Requiem, along with wearing many other hats uh, as when enabled, I am needed and can. Today's webinar onboarding webinar presentation is about our philosophy philosophical discussions on the principles of our organization. Um, I do apologize. This was originally meant to to be posted a, a live um, if we were able to. Um, yeah, we had technical issues. Technically, I was passed out from pain medication. So that is a valid reason for us to have missed it. So right now you just get to hear my yap trap. And if you've got any questions or comments to make about the discussion as we're having it, please put it in the comments below. I do watch for comments. I do have other people who are watching our social media accounts for comments. We will get back to you and answer with as soon as possible. Sorry. So our first philosophy that we like to discuss is about an adaptable guilt system. And what this means is how we are able to organically function and grow and adapt with changes as they happen. So what exactly does this mean? Well, the best way for me to demonstrate this is to give you pretty much a history of Guilds of Requiem, where we originally started until we got to here. So officially and formally, Guilds of Requiem started in 2016 as Project Requiem. A little bit later, it was known as Project Requiem Ranch. And then we got to Requiem Ranch Guilds before we finally got to the Guilds of Requiem name. So with each step in our process, which our branding came into focus in 2018 as Guilds of Requiem and a sole proprietorship and then an LLC, each person, each event, each opportunity, we were able to adapt to the needed changes without disrupting our day-to-day -day business aspect. So we would have somebody new come in. We would have learning lessons on both sides of that equation where we were then able to adapt to make positive changes to our organization. Uh, we were allowed, be, allowed to help these people grow their own knowledge and in being a member of Guilds of Requiem. In 2020, we incorporated as a nonprofit with the state of Texas. There's a big designation difference between the two. The first one is saying to the state of Texas, we are a nonprofit corporation. This is also an indicator to the IRS that they're gonna kind of keep an eye on us and our filings to see if we are actually operating as we specified in our incorporation articles to the state of Texas. Our original plan was 2025 that uh, we, would we would submit for our, non -tax, our, our nonprofit status. And uh, we got a big surprise earlier this year when the IRS formally recognized us as a 501c private foundation. So let's go back a little bit further. I mean, I'm talking way back. I'm talking to 1990 back. I was in high school and in advanced educational programs. Yeah, I was one of those nerds that everybody hated and loved at the same time because, well, you know, I was, I was an adorable dork. At least that's what I got told several times. So one of my classes, was on, uh, it was a junior achievement type class. It was the Future Business Leaders of, uh, of America, a future, future Business Leaders course run by Mr. Kincaid. And one of the things that he did was he challenged us to create a perfect nonprofit, to theoretically create that perfect nonprofit organization and he wasn't known to pass students in this class, let alone give them an A. I mean, you you had to really be a suck ass. I mean, um, to be a brown announcer to get a good grade in his class. And he was just so impressed with the presentation that I turned in that I was given an A. That blew me away and everyone else because how I laid it out to be organic, to be adaptable to be knowledgeable, to be respectful, to be educational, all of our philosophies. I had originally formed seven years, you know, back in 1990. Um, we, won't write, we won't say what year of high school that was. In 1992, our first brand was created, well, specifically for me. And it was focused on traditional soap making with recycled oils. 
Everybody else knows this as Six Cents Apothecary. If you haven't heard the story before, I'm getting ready to tell it to you again. So in 1992, I had my own place by myself, not sharing it with anybody. It was a nice, it was an apartment in a, a Cup of Roach Motel. Um, well, no, actually Cup of Roach apartment complexes. And we had on the third floor, this entire, fa this, this family from India had re rented the entire floor. I mean, our apartment building smelled amazing. It didn't matter what time of day or night. It was just, oh man, if I wasn't hungry before I got home, I was certainly hungry within a few minutes of after getting home because that just smelled good. The good thing is, is their mom loved me. All she had was sons. She had no daughter. So with it, you know, I'd come in my back door of the apartment. And by the time I could get to the front of the apartment, there was a knock on my door. And they said, Robin, Miss Robin, you come and eat with us. Okay, you're coming to eat. Come up, come, come, come up. Um, so I would go up and I would pig out. <laughs> yeah, that was good food, man. That was back when I could eat curry. And one day she ran out of soap and I heard her complaining and I, didn't speak Hindu or anything else at the time. Well, I spoke other languages, just not Hindu. And so I asked my my friend, what, what's your mom talking about? He says, oh, well, we ran out of soap. She's getting ready to give all the younger boys a bath and we have no soap. And I said, give me just a second. I was making my own soap from recycled oils to help, help me save money. I brought up a couple of bars of soap. Her, when she found out that I made these soap, what I made them with, She's like, oh, oh, you've got to give me more of these. I, I know who, who will buy them. And that was officially how Six Cents Apothecary started. It also had a few care products such as hand balms and lip balms. Um, I tried to stay away from lotions because there was preservatives involved in it. But I also had some homeopathic remedies that were tied into it. And we kind of created our first intentional network of being able to order bulk herbs and spices for the... Uh, international uh, immigrant community in Sioux Falls and everybody would just pre-pitch in with their money for what they were ordering so that we could bulk discount. So that was an amazing feeling to be 18 years old and already running a business that was doing pretty darn good. So in 1995, our second and third brands were kind of created at the same time. One of them still around, the other one has gotten melded with somewhere else. Um, well, yeah, it's just a different name. No, it's still the name. Um, so I went off to seminary school. I had actually was doing courses by mail. Um, that was the first uh, long distance courses as they sent you the paperwork and you did the lessons, you, write it, you wrote your essays and you sent it back. And if you passed, they sent you the next course. If you didn't pass, they sent your information back to you and said, try again with no feedback. And then in uh, the summer of 1990, I, I had to go up there for a few weeks and uh, actually have my hands on practical and everything. And then I became an ordained Baptist minister. And I was really, really excited until I found out some harsh truths about uh, the Baptist church when it uh, applies to women, especially younger white women that um, kind of, I kind of lost, lost faith in, in organized religions. So I still had a couple of friends who wanted to get married and they were different different faiths. so their origin their both of their churches uh religious organizations that they belong to said no we're not going to marry you so they came to me and they said hey did you know there's this place in modesto california called universal life church that they'll ordain you and then you can perform marriages in any state that it's legal in okay sure at the time it wasn't free at the time i had to send them 20 bucks which back then 20 bucks was a lot i mean it's still a lot now but it was worth more back then so Haven of the Dragon was born, and it was essentially a world religions education organization that also offered life services. Why Haven? We were wanting to create a community where it was safe to ask questions about any religion and to study any religion without fear of being of somebody trying to convert you to that religion. Um, why of the dragon? Well, well, most people think that the dragons are scary people, spirit, scary creatures. Um, a lot, a lot of cultures revere the dragons for their love of knowledge, and they would rather hoard books than precious jewels and gold. So we felt that was the perfect name for our organization. 
how did I help finance that organization? We had Terra Haven Mall, which was handcrafted religious items, items created by the members to support the Haven. And all the way up until this year, it was its own standalone nonprofit uh, organiz religious organization until we incorporated it into Guilds of Requiem. So in 2005, yeah, notice a big 10 year dip there. I had a long, long break from a lot of lives, from a lot of things. Um, I began attending events. Um, I also started my business management courses and marketing courses as a someone who worked full time and then was doing things on the side, plus had children. It was a challenge to take more than one course at a time. So online schooling, it was for me. So then I had to take another break once I got my associate's degree in drafting and design uh, in architectural drafting and engineering design. Plus, I also had a business management associates took a long break. And in 2010, I started focusing on my education again, and I began a bachelor's in business management course and frequent referred to the business as I was already operating. Come 2013, that was the year of change. I graduated with a bachelor's degree and began working in retail management. I continued taking classes until I had my master's degree in business management and marketing and Project Requiem began to solidify. I also had a lot of changes in my personal life. I went from Mrs. to Miss and short, you know, took a while later, I became Mrs. again. And I had to decide what was best for me and my kids. And talking to a lot of people who knew me, they're like, well, we always thought you were going to be a teacher. I was driving heavy haul for a while. And when I'd get stuck at these rigs, I was helping them, you know, some of them to pass their certifications. And they're, you know, they're like, you know, you should be a teacher, miss. You should be a teacher. And I, I you know, kind of talked around with some some other people and especially the, the places I had worked and all of them were like, no, you belonged in training and education. That, that we could tell that was where your heart is. So um, that's kind of where I decided at, in 2015 to begin my master's in education. I also started working in higher edu education. As much as I loved my, my heavy road, my he uh, over the road, heavy haul driving and hot shotting and retail work, I, I just needed consistent income and I needed to be there for my kids. So I started working at a local college in the registrar's office and I started adjunct teaching pretty much that same, the next semester. So with each class that I took in my master's of education, Project Requiem just began to fo focus. Haven of the Dragon became, started to become more solidified in what it was offering and what it was about. So it was a very big year of change for me. So 2016, I moved to San Antonio. Um, as most people know, June 6th of 2016 was also the biggest change of my life when I was in an auto accident with a 2,000 pound cow. Believe it or not, the cow was the one who lost. Technically, that night, the cow lost. Um, I began working at UTSA in their campus rec as an administrative assistant, and I was also adjunct teaching. And then later, I started working towards um, doing GED teaching because it was outside of my normal work hours. And the concept now it was now known as Project Curriculum Ranch. So we were getting closer, getting, get, getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. In 2017 and 2018, I changed, I didn't change careers. I just changed who I was working for. And I part, began teaching GED and ESL courses part-time and started focusing more on Guilds of Requiem. We officially formalized and registered a name and we formalized what each of our seven departments or guilds was gonna be about. So it was in 2019 that things really kind of got hazy. Because the end of 2018 is when I got my master's in adult education and I started taking the courses for my doctorate in education with an emphasis on distant learning. Uh, I created the curriculum for the ESL, for the GED courses and the ESL courses for the organization I worked for that was approved by the Texas Education Agency. So I already had a lot of legitimate work underneath my belt. I had submitted the courses for the Haven of the Dragon to the Department of Education and they, they agreed with my curriculum. And uh, so that was already up online before I took the, the website down and 
So it was, you know, it was kind of odd that I, I received this letter saying that they were conferring the doctor of, a, they had conferred on upon me the doctor of adult education. Okay, whatever. Yeah, you know, they're like, because of your work, this, this, and this, you know, I, I, my mind read it as honorary. So I put it aside completely, forgot about it. So it comes to 2020, um, having a lot of time to think about it and the world shutting down, we decided to go ahead and file for our nonprofit corporation with the state of Texas. And this, this officially solidified the final concept of to all who were involved with what we were about and the scope of how big we can become. 2021, I had to take a year off to focus on health, but I also talked the, took the opportunity to increase our network base, and we helped solidify in everyone's mind that we were a nonprofit entity. Um, anybody who inquired about it when we had people out vending or emailed us or messaged us, you know, we, we flat out told them that our entire business model has always been nonprofit. That's, that, that was our focus. We wanted to be there for our community and our networks and provide education. So in 2022, we submitted to our IRS, didn't think we were actually gonna get it three years ahead of plan. And they backdated it to when we incorporated as a nonprofit with the state of Texas in August of 2020. Blew my mind. And while all this time that I'm going, oh, cool, 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 cool. I'm now looking at that everything that I had planned leading up to a 2025 submission of it now needed to be done, like websites, lots of websites, because each guild has its own website that ties back to our main website, and our guild, our sub guilds have their own websites that tie back to their guild website and to the main website. So, had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, website design in my future. So, what do we have going forward? In 2023, we are going to continue to, you know, be fluid in nature that allows us to take lessons we learn and translate them into directions of change. We have a really good setup while our hierarchy may be, may seem confusing to some, it's one that works for us to have our board of directors um, that includes our, our three primary staff members of the president, secretary, and treasurer. Then we have um, the vice presidents of different functions, and then our executive board members are our guild masters or the department heads. So with each person, each event that we go, we do, that we host or we go to or help with, they add to our overall plan or they tell us where we need to make some changes. And as you know, already stated, we're organic in nature. It gives us the greatest freedom to follow our focus. So what does that mean? Well, that means we're following our mission as stated to the IRS and the state of Texas. One of our primary goals is to create intentional communities. This is called networking, but it's with a specific purpose. We recognize that education is a two-way street that it should be affordable and relatable to the industries and communities that we serve. And we also, we also believe that community engagement begins with us and it takes root in the com communities where we serve with this as our guiding principle. So you will find that anything that we do is gonna have one, two, or all three of our missions as a part of their goal. So I hope this gives you a little bit more information about how we are an adaptable guild system. If you have any questions, please have an honest discussion down in our comments. We do keep an eye on all social media. And if for some reason you don't get a response from one of us, it takes about two to four business days, depending on how busy we are uh, and what everybody's feels are. Please remember to email me. Uh, I am Dr. Robin Kearney Frazier. I am the president of Guilds of Requiem. My email is at gmail.com. It will be in the description of this video. And I thank you. And I hope everybody has a fantastic holiday season. And we hope to see you at the rest of our philosophy events.